Hi, my name is Mito Junta and I'm a staff member here at the Elizabeth Ney Museum. The museum is part of the Parks and Recreation Department of the City of Austin. I work primarily on the landscape here, which is a native prairie restoration project that's been ongoing for about the last 10 years. It's a beautiful spring day, not feeling quite as much like summer as yesterday was, so I want to show you around. Before I show you some of the plants, I want to talk a little bit about the history of this land. Now, take everything I'm going to say with a grain of salt, not only because I'm not at all an expert on this subject, but also because uh, this history kind of reaches back into a lot of the unknowns of Austin history 100 to 150 years ago. Elizabeth Ney and her husband Edmund Montgomery bought this land in 1892 as part of uh, Shipe's subdivision that was called Hyde Park. And they bought several uh, several lots of his subdivision, uh, comprising about six acres of the northeasternmost part of the, of the subdivision. Um, so they were part of the subdivision, but a much larger piece of land. The land has had a varied history, including before they bought it. The post oaks and other hardwoods that grew here were likely logged in the mid 19th century as Austin expanded. And prior to Shipe developing the land, it was used as a fairgrounds and, if I'm not mistaken, a horse race track. I don't know that this site was used like that, but parts of Hyde Park were. Nay herself kept at least one horse here, as well as having a vegetable garden. And we know that a lot of the area was, was clear, although there were a scattering of uh, old oaks, post oaks and live oaks, as well as some old juniper trees. And we have at least, we have two uh, really three large post oaks still here um, along with some live oaks and some very old junipers uh, still today and some younger post oaks which we can show you in a bit. This area here under the shade of uh, these this live oak and these post oaks is one of my favorite areas on the site. Uh, it's a great place to be in the heat of the day and it's dominated by uh, plants like inland sea oats and uh, frostweed here, both native plants. We have a lot of spiderwort that comes up with its blooms early in the season. Now it's looking a little dry as it goes to seed, as well as things like uh, white avens, uh, horse herb, which we can see lower down. Um, we have some uh, native Texas lantana here and uh, a variety of other things. This is mealy blue sage, which is a native salvia. Um, and it's one of the native plants that has started to procreate itself here on the Ney. It's a big favorite of the bees. This is a uh, cutleaf daisy or Engelmann daisy. Cutleaf comes from the shape here of the leaves. And uh, we find this both in the sun and in the shade here at the Ney. Here we're under the shade of this large post oak. Following Elizabeth Ney's death in 1907, this site was used and landscaped in various different ways. In 1943, when the Texas Fine Arts Association moved to Laguna Gloria, this became a park site. And a lot of it was kept under turf grass and ivy, um, along with various non-native uh, tree covers, um, crepe myrtles and privets, uh, ligustrum. This is firewheel. Another one of our wildflowers, spring wildflowers. Just starting to, to really come out now. A, a student, student of biology will note that this landscape is in some stage of, uh, of succession, uh, kind of on the in an earlier stage of succession. The land has been compacted by a lot of traffic, foot traffic and otherwise. And uh, the kind of plants that we see here are indicative of that. We have a lot of pioneer species. Um, and for me, those species are the real, uh, the real workers and the real heroes in this landscape. Their tap roots sink down uh, and break up the soil their roots feed the soil food web, and each year they fall as compost uh, upon this land and make it a little bit richer and support, hopefully, more native plants in the future. 
The mixed plants we see here now is a mix of both natives and non-native plants. Here we have um, what's called uh, hedge parsley, um, or what people here in town call beggar's lice, and that's a non-native plant that we actually try and remove before it goes to seed. And then this is pink evening primrose, which is a native of ours. And while the uh, beggar's lice is something that we try and remove, I, I think it's important to note that it also is serving ecosystem functions. Uh, one, just to name one thing, it has a deep taproot that in these compacted areas reaches way down, uh, aerates and breaks open the soil, introduces roots to deeper layers of the soil, and then eventually uh, decomposes and leaves its, uh, its nutrients down there. Post oak that the Friends of the Ney planted here on the uh, southwest corner of the property facing Scheidt Park. This is another part of the property that probably saw a lot of traffic in the past. The land is still quite compressed and we have a, a nice mix of natives and non-native plants um, at this point that are, are working to rehab the soil. We have uh, a few different types of silverleaf nightshade, uh, which is a native common ragweed. Um, we see this field behind me, which does get a lot of wildflowers and is a great benefit to insects and birds. Um, is comprised largely of non-native species. We're always trying to introduce natives here, but uh, nature takes its own course, and we have things like um, rescue grass, and um, which is a winter-growing brome species, and also uh, the uh, beggar's lice. This is blue curls, also called caterpillars. It's a common uh, roadside wildflower east of Austin. We are at the front of the building near the entrance and we have some, some wildflowers that have uh, volunteered themselves out of bounds. This is standing cypress. You can see the blue bonnets that are mostly seeds now. The seeds are ripening. It's a legume, they look like little edamame pods. And over here is a uh, prairie coneflower, also called Mexican hat. There are a lot of native plants here, and I guess there are more and more every year. This is Little Blue Stem, a, a really common native rangeland grass. It's also just gorgeous. You can see the color uh, of the leaves, new growth here in the evening light. And in the fall, it has a tall, uh, or in the summer, it has a tall inflorescence, the flowering part, the seed stalks. And in the fall, those turn a bright red color. I'm getting close to the creek, and this is rock rose, uh, Pavonia lasupatala, people would call it just Pavonia. And it's all closed up tight for the night now, and it'll probably open again tomorrow. It's in the hibiscus family, along with Turk's cap, another one of our native uh, plants. If you've been here, you've probably noticed this dam, um, which now has an archway in it that was added later. When Ney moved here, this was uh, a lake, commonly called Bullfrog Lake, out of a large pond. Um, and people would come here and fish and even canoe. There's photos of people in canoes on the lake. Uh, during her time here, that was, was drained, um, although you can still see the spillway and, and the dam. This creek is part of what makes the restoration project that we're doing on the southern half of the property so important for, for wildlife. And as we rewild this area, we see so many birds coming here. There's a neighborhood uh, birder who uh, tells me of all the kinds of birds she sees here. I see a few of them. The other day I saw uh, an indigo bunting and some goldfinches, along with the usual mix of wrens and, uh, and warblers and cardinals, jays. And uh, she told me that, that day she'd seen uh, a painted bunting here in the creek. The creek is an entirely different ecosystem here, uh, but it supports the prairie. The birds and the pollinators that use the prairie can find water here. The tree cover here is things like pecans, hackberries, 
uh, Wooly Bumelia, um, False Willow, Texas Ash. Uh, there's some poison ivy too. It's a native plant. We're ending up here under a live oak tree uh, in a place where we have a lot of pictures of Elizabeth Nay sitting and welping, welcoming guests under a live oak tree very similar to this one, maybe the parent of this tree. And I just want to say thanks for following me along on this little tour. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can visit soon, uh, especially if you haven't visited the Elizabeth Nay Museum before. Thank you.